you can build your own custom gravity flow rack to deliver work materials directly to their point of use. Today, we're going to show you a super easy modular system that will let you assemble your own flow rack in just under 10 minutes. Let's get started. This is the first video of our Gravity Flow Rack series. Hi guys, my name is Trent. And I'm Brad. We're from Stream Innovations, where we've developed and implemented process improvement solutions around the world for the last 25 years. Today, we're gonna to show you the simple steps you can take to build a custom Gravity Flow Rack, which can help your team organize and deliver materials efficiently to the point of use. So today we're starting off with uh, what we consider to be our standard flow rack design. Uh, and this, this same can, design can apply uh, to whatever size flow rack that you need, regardless of upright height, uh, number of flow levels, uh, your bin width that you need to, need to supply into, uh, even the length that you need uh, for fitting into your, your cells uh, with the number of bins you need or the length you need to go from the aisle to the pick point of use. Uh, this same design is going to apply regardless of all those factors. So we use flex wrap building materials because they're flexible, strong, and easy to customize for your specific needs. We'll show you how to get these materials later on in the video, but right now let's get started and get into it. We use structural tube that is one inch by one inch square with holes every one inch, starting at the half inch mark from the end of the tube. Simply count the holes for placement. Holes are sized to use 5 16 inch nuts and bolts. Tube comes standard in 6 inch increments, starting at 6 inches all the way up to 120 inches or 10 feet. Tube is available in 8 standard colors or custom color of your choice. The blue tube you see here is by far the color of choice for most customers. Flexcraft uses a three-point joint, making assembly fast, easy, and accurate. We place the first bolt in the fourth hole to allow for stem caster swivel wheels or adjustable leveler feet. The three-point system is self-squaring, making assembly fast and accurate. Tighten nuts and bolts by hand initially. Keep the nuts and bolts slightly loose to make the assembly easier and faster. In this part of the assembly, the structure will appear to be wobbly. That is okay. At the end of the build, we will tighten them down with a wrench and ratchet driver. Place bolt in the fourth hole from the top. Attach crossbar support tube using two and a half inch bolts. Our newly designed electric ergonomic lift table adjusts to any height between 25 to 42 inches. See link below for more details. Place lane guide length tubes on top of cross tubes. Note the two inch angle from the load end to the pick end. The three point joints on the top corners of the flow rack provide for a very strong structure. Place end stop tube on top. Please note, placement of cross tubes is important to avoid pinch points when sloping the length tubes. Flip the assembly so the leg bottoms are securely placed on the table. Use a tape measure or count holes to find the center of the length tubes. A center support is normally only required for flow racks that are six feet or longer. For more technical details on structural tube load capacities, please see link below for a downloadable copy of this chart. Place the upright support towards the pick end of the rack. Place the cross tube towards the load end.
Rollers are spring-loaded to make installation extremely easy. Simply place the fixed end into the hole on one side of the flow lane. Slightly depress the spring side and insert into the corresponding hole on the opposite side. Determine roller spacing and keep adding rollers. Please note, Stream's rollers are available in any width to match the flow rack width dimensions. Determine return lane vertical spacing and add cross support tube. In most cases, we use a 2 inch drop for gravity flow racks. Measure the low end of the return lane and add the cross support tube on the inside of the vertical uprights. Add the stop tube 2 inches above the cross support tube on the outside of the vertical uprights. Add horizontal support tubes, bolts, and nuts. Tighten all bolts. Build the return lane using the same process as for the top, but in reverse direction. We use an Itachi, now called Metabo, cordless impact gun with a half inch nut driver to quickly tighten the nut onto the bolt. Install lane guides using one and a half inch long, 5 16 inch diameter hex bolts. Lane guides help the part box or bin flow in a straight line. Lane guides can be reversed if required to create narrower lanes. Lane guides are available in 23 inch, 17 inch, and 11 inch lengths. Test your gravity flow rack. Please note the flow lanes can be adjusted to different heights. Also additional flow lanes can be added for additional materials. That's all there really is to it. If you'd like to order materials and plans for your own custom flow rack, check out our store at streaminnovation.com. If you have any questions about this build or ideas for what you'd like to see us build next, leave a comment below or send us a quick email. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with anyone you think might find it helpful. Thanks.